appreciate you streaming on in here on Birds 365. If last week was healing week, licking their wounds from their 38-35 loss in the Kansas City Chiefs in the Super Bowl, this week is time to get back to the rest of the year. Uh, it is Howie Roseman time with juggling going on with both the Eagles roster and coaching staff. And we'll uh, be here uh, all week to talk about it with you. We would be Jody McDonald and John McMullen, your Mac and Mac Birds 365 guys. <laughs> um, Johnny Mac, we knew this was going to happen. We didn't know what degree it was going to happen to, but the pilfering of the Eagles staff continues after last week watching both Shane Steichen and Jonathan Gannon go out the door for head coaching opportunities elsewhere. Eagles lost another member of their uh, coaching staff with Nick Rallis going to Arizona to be the new defensive coordinator for the Philadelphia Eagles. And he's pretty young for that job, is he not, Johnny Mac? 29. 29 years old. Youngest uh, coordinator in the NFL. So, yeah, that's the way it's been trending. Um, teammates in college with Max Williams, the Cardinals tight end. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, it's interesting. We talked about it a lot here i think you know the eagle success has kind of opened people's minds you know i mentioned last week on the show nick and and jonathan are very close that was a um i wasn't going to say a fait accompli but he was going to get serious consideration with arizona um you know can he convince others that a 29 year old can be a defensive coordinator in this league um evidently he did uh, and we'll see how it works out. But uh, Drew Petzig, who I also mentioned, is probably going to be his offensive coordinator. He hired him. It's 35, 36. So, uh, you know, and, and Jonathan himself, uh, it's just over 40. So, um, yeah, a lot of, of the Eagles' success is, is sort of spreading across the NFL. <laughs> Teams look at the Eagles. They really do. They, they really do part. We talked about it last year with their front office. Now it's their coaching staff. You know, you forget Brian Johnson, the nibbles he's got, he's very young. Uh, uh, Shane Steichen's, you know, 37 uh, is a head coach in this league. Now um, Denard Wilson has gotten, uh, you know, he, he'd be the oldest of the lots. Uh, it's pretty amazing. It really is. And Oh, by the way, we just mentioned this in passing and we probably should have made a bigger emphasis of it. How many coaching changes did the Eagles make last year, John? Zero. Zero. That's unheard of. You don't do that. Well, they yet. made some changes, you know, promotions, things like that. But notable changes, zero. So, yeah. No, now, you rarely see that. Uh, to that, keep that an entire staff together is uh, just not something that happens all the time in the National Football League. And then to have the season that they have and go all the way to the Super Bowl, come up just short, tells you their evaluation of the staff at the end of last year was spot on. It was a, uh, a phenomenal staff that was put together by all parties, included uh, Nick Sirianni as the head coach, Howie Roseman as the general manager. They really did put together a phenomenal staff. And now, because of the success they had, it is dispersing to all parts of the globe, as far as the NFL goes, that they're going elsewhere. Has the defection stopped? Or is there more yet to come? Is uh, Jonathan Gannon and or Shane Steichen? Shane Steichen hasn't picked anybody off the staff yet, John. And you don't know what kind yeah. of agreements that he and Nick Sirianni might have had. That, listen, you can't take one. Maybe you take a secondary coach. Um, do you think the Eagles will lose any more guys on this day? I think it's a possibility. I mean, Kevin Petulo's the guy I have my eye on, um, you know, because he's not going to be the offensive coordinator here. And if, you know, and if Shane says, for instance, he wants him as an offense, the Eagles can't block that. They can't do anything to stop that. Uh, back in the old days, you could. If a guy were was under contract, and it's interesting, I'm writing about this today. You know, of all the things, and we we have this show, Jody, and we talk about everything involving the Eagles. You know, pretty <laughs> in depth. Mm -hmm. You know, everything from Jalen Hurts down to the 53rd guy on the roster at times, because we have the time to do so. You know, coaching in the NFL, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. It's 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 probably the last 
last thing, last part of the industry that is not really transparent. Like there's nowhere, like most, like I can tell you, most assistant coaches get two year deals. So in theory, uh, most are out of contract right now and, and could shop around and leave if they wanted to. Um, but sometimes, you know, it's three years. Sometimes it's four years. I saw the Drew Petzing I mentioned. I, I, I think he signed a three-year deal to be the coordinator. Sometimes it's a little different. You know, there's no NFLPA for coaches, you know, where, where everything eventually becomes public and filed. And so it, it's sort of the last frontier of the unknown. And, and, and I talked about, think about, you know, the whole trope was blown up by Nick Sirianni. And we've talked about it a lot here. You know, Doug Peterson, they micromanaged his coaching staff and they let Nick do what he wanted. Turns out that's not even remotely close to the case. I knew Jonathan Gannon was essentially hired before Nick. I didn't know Shane Steichen was. He was. Uh, he was in place before. Um, and then, you know, it's easy to make the leap. It happened to be, and we said it last week, it's sort of like the tail wagging the dog. You know, it said, well, Nick had a history with Gannon and Indy and Steichen and Indy. So it makes sense that he was on board, but it, it, it was just a coincidence really. And it, it, it's, it's the last vestige of the unknown coaching in the NFL from that perspective, from the perspective of who's really good at it. How do you judge? How do you judge position coaches other than, well, that guy's a good player, but Nick has mm -hmm. said, you know, we've talked about it a lot over the past couple weeks because he, he knew he was going to lose some guys. And he said, you know, your job as a coach is to, to help a player reach his ceiling and maybe yeah. go a little bit above his ceiling as a player. Can't do much more. I, I'm, so it's, so, it's such an interesting subject to me, and, and we're seeing it. But one thing I can tell the people is, look, it's happened time and time again from Andy Reid on down, you know, one of the best coaches of all time. When you lose guys, it's difficult to replace them. So that continuity you were talking about, that was a big deal. And these guys leaving, even though so many Eagles fans don't like Jonathan Gannon and blah, blah, blah. It's a big deal. It really is a big deal. And you got to get on the same page with the new guys you're bringing in. So let's take a look at the new guys. Um, the belief is still that Brian Johnson is the runaway leader in the clubhouse to become the offensive coordinator. At what point do we start to speculate on when it's going to happen? That if uh, this is their guy and Nick did his press uh, availability last week, you were there, you questioned him. Um, he left open the door possibility of looking for outside candidates for either of the two coordinator positions they had to fill, but you just got the feeling that they were looking more at the outside candidates for the defensive coordinator than they were the offensive coordinator. It makes too much sense. Brian Johnson, his relationship with Jalen hurts, but it hasn't happened yet. And you would think that it would happen this week, but we'll find out if it does. Um, so they haven't asked permission to speak to anyone else from any other organization for the offensive coordinator position. Read into that what you will. Oh, they have on the defensive side. They've already gotten permission to talk to two guys, uh, Vance Joseph and Desai, the uh, former defense coordinator in Chicago, who coached under Vic Fangio and then uh, went to Seattle this past year as an associate head coach under Pete Carroll. Um, so, uh, there, there is good possibility. They could go outside. Sorry to say Denard Wilson, I still hope you get the job. Um, but, uh, how do you think those two interviews uh, proceed this week? How quick do you think the Eagles are looking to act? Or is this something that they're going to take their time on and not worry about how quickly it moves? No, I think it's going to happen pretty quickly. And, you know, the, the combine starts on the 28th, I believe Week from tomorrow. So, yeah. I, I think, um, I think it'll be in place before then. Um, because you want your coordinators out there, you know, on, on the same page and interviewing players and all that kind of stuff. So, um, I think it'll be in place before then, you know, you mentioned they haven't requested, well, we don't know if they were good. They, they probably have, right. but that stuff 
takes time to trickle out. Um, and you got to go through the Rudy rule stuff. So you can't just promote Brian Johnson and say, all right, you're, you're the offensive coordinator. But even the way, you know, Howie and, and Nick spoke about Brian in the season ending press conference, it was almost like, a, you know, all right, we're all doing this because we have to do it, but he's the guy. Um, so, yeah, he's going to be the offensive coordinator. And then the defensive coordinator, yeah, it's more open-ended. And But I don't think it's going to be this wide-ranging search. In fact, if you ask me, it's probably going to be Denard or, or Sean Desai. That's probably going to be the answer. I think the Vance Joseph stuff was a little um, – overblown you know it, it, they have so many players to fit that scheme you know forget the gannon scheme the fangio scheme um to change now would be bad to well, be then, perfectly honest. let me ask you a question why do you think they even went down that road if that's the case and oh by the way i agree with you when you've got a hassan reddick when you invest like you did on jordan davis who seemed to be a specific fit for the type of defense they played this past year, quote-unquote Fangio defense. Why even bother with interviewing Vance Joseph? Well, part of, it, part, of it, part of it is PR as well. I mean, that's part of it. And you want to signal, oh, we're looking at these different people and, you know, we've done our due diligence and Denard was the best guy whoever they go. And, you know, you say that, hey, they talked to Van Joseph and they think Denard's the best guy. Part of it's that. It might be Sean. Um, right. But then don't you open yourself to up to second guessing? If you... Well, you're always going to get second guessed. I mean, okay. you're always going to get second guessed when you, when you, um, people like big names, you know, I, I see it all the time. They, uh, you know, they want Rex Ryan and Lovey Smith which would make absolutely no sense, but they're recognizable names. And, um, you know, that's just natural. Is there no recognizable name on the offensive side of the ball where they look like they just got to. Well, I think, I think the offensive, I think the offense is easier because um, Jalen had such a good year. Jalen's so close to Brian. I think it's an easier sell. Whereas for some reason, I, you know, to me, we, we, we talk about this all the time. To me, the defense was ranked second. The offense was ranked third. But the sentiment to the fan base is the offense is great, no issues, and the defense was terrible. I don't get it. I can't figure it out. But it is. It is what it is. I mean, that's what the Eagles are dealing with. Um, And they've been dealing with it all season. They're well aware of it. Um, It doesn't make any sense, but it's there. I think you would agree with that. I do, but what I don't, uh, well, I shouldn't say I don't agree. I don't understand. If we think Eagles are a smart organization, why would they worry about the perception? Well, they of are, they're always worried about perception. I mean, they're obsessed with perception. I mean, they, they, they understand. I mean, I'm, not, I'm not saying they do things because of perception. They don't. But they know they they understand it. You well, they do do the- things if they bring in defensive coordinators for interviews uh, in a masquerade fashion, just to uh, appease perception. Well, you have to appease the NFL. You have to appease a lot of things. You you know, if it were up to them, they would have just named Brian Johnson the offensive coordinator. But they can't um, because you have to appease certain rules. There's a lot of things in life you have to appease. And by the way, I don't, I don't even know if they've interviewed me. I, I have to check on that today. There was a report that they wanted to talk to Vance Joseph. Right, ask permission. I, yeah, um, I don't even know if they if that's correct yet. But I'll try to figure that that out today after I get off the the show. So I don't even know if that part's correct. Which I go back to my original point: coaching's the last vestige of. There, it, it's not transparent. You know, the hiring process is not transparent. Uh, certainly with sit, never mind. You know, with head coaches, it, it's not transparent. Never mind assistants. So there's a lot of misinformation out there, and I'll try to track that down. But yeah, it, it would make no sense, and that's one of the reasons I'm saying this because it 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 would make no sense for Vance Joseph to come in here unless he's on board with changing his philosophy and all that kind of stuff. 
you know, if you think he's a, a great defensive mind, he's going to utilize what he has and not change, you know, maybe, maybe it's more realistic, but I have, I've seen no evidence of that. And I think it would be goofy for this team to shift after what they did this season. And it's not only Hassan Reddick and Jordan Davis. I mean, Bradbury's not going to be back, but CJ, I mean, look at CJ Gardner Johnson. What, what, you think he's a box safety? You think he's an old school box safety? I mean, you have to play a certain style to, to, to accentuate his talents. There's so many players they brought in that are scheme specific for what they, what they run. Um, I think it would be a step back to go in a different direction, but that's just me. And I don't I, like Ted's scheme. <laughs> right, which you think is overused in the National Football League. And you sent me a text this week. The guy who thinks it's overused is the creator himself. Yeah, He's like ticked off that as many teams are adopting his philosophy because, yeah, everybody sees it. Everybody figures a way to uh, beat it yeah. or at least. I, uh, I, I got that it. quote. I was, I'm glad you brought that up. I should. So here's what Vic said to the Dolphins website, Vic Fangio. I guess imitation is the best form of flattery, but I prefer it not being that way because <laughs> offenses get used to attacking it. And so we always have to adjust to come up with new things. It's what I've been talking about since day one. I'm glad Vic said it. It's happened with cover two at Tony Junji. It happened with cover three with Pete Carroll. It happened with the A-gap stuff with Mike Zimmer. And it's happening with Vic. And he knows it. And he knows it. The more you see it, the easier it gets to deal with it. And I think we're in the sort of middle of that with big scheme. But if you're that opposed to it, you would should be rooting for Vance Joseph to get the job because you think the Eagles need to go in another direction because well, everybody's think, playing Angio defense. Well, I'm, I, I mean, I'm not rooting for anybody to get the job, but I think you're going to take a step back. Now, that doesn't mean you can't take a step back and take two forward down the road. But I think you got to realize, well, first of all, you're going to take a step back anyway. I think, you know, and I was on Rick. We're going to have Ricky Ricardo on yesterday. I was on with Ricky uh, last night on WIP, and he asked me um, he asked me about that. And, and, and I'm like, even if Gannon were back, they're not going to reach the standard they set this year. They're not. They're not getting 70 sacks again. The, the, the likelihood they're number two in the NFL defense is really, really small. Could they do it? Yeah, in theory. They could even be number one. But it's really, really small, especially when you look at all the career years the players, the defensive players had. There were so many career years, who never players who've never played better than they played this season. So you're going to have a little bit of a regression baked in to begin with. Now, again, that doesn't mean you can't take a step back and, and take two down the road, but I think people are like, no, we got to be better. We got to be better right now. That's going to be that's going to be really difficult, Jody. Yes, a easier said than done. Just, oh, you got to put them right back out there again next year. No, they're going to be free agent defections, and now with Gannon gone, even if Gannon had stayed, it was going to be difficult to repeat the kind of defensive year they had. But any uh, – self-respecting Eagle fan is going to remember only one thing. Yeah, they blew it in the Super Bowl. Yeah, forget those. Forget that 14-3 and three regular season. Forget giving up seven points in either of those two playoff games. Yeah. They yeah. collapsed in the Super Bowl. That's why Gannon had to go. We got to retool, refix this whole defense. Yeah, you and I might disagree with that just a little bit. All right. He's Mac. I'm Mac. That makes it Mac and Mac Birds 365, McBowen and McDonald. Coming up next, we put uh, special A to the a special Ed to the test. Our buddy Ed Kratz from Sports Illustrated, Johnny's running mate over at SI, scheduled to jump in with us. We haven't had in uh, since the Super Bowl, so we will look back at that unfortunate Sunday against Kansas City. But then uh, we'll talk Eagles coaching staff and all things Eagles with Ed Kratz of Sports Illustrated. He joins us next here. On